Good morning, church. I hope everyone had a wonderful week this past week. Um, we're still stuck here in the house, unfortunately. We thought we was going to be able to be over at the church, but I don't think Cherokee County is wanting non-residents over there, so we are stuck here maybe a few more weeks. Um, today is Palm Sunday, and I wanted to share a little something with you that I read online this morning. It says, why did Jesus go to Jerusalem on Palm Sunday? Though Jesus had been to Jerusalem several times to celebrate the feasts, his final entry into Jerusalem had a special meaning. He was solemnly entering as a humble king of peace. Traditionally, entering the city on a donkey symbolizes arrival in peace, rather than as a war-waging king arriving on a horse. We've got a few people on our prayer list this morning. Um, let's keep remembering Jackie Anderson, Vernell Whitaker, Joan Whitaker. Let's remember each other, all of our church members. Um, Kathy Mayberry, the family of Chuck McTaggart, um, our, our leaders in Washington. Let's, let's pray that God gives them the knowledge to do what they need to do. Um, all of our people who are on the front lines, they're risking their lives every day to try to help us. And we need to work, keep remembering them. Keep remembering all who are infected with this virus. Um, Shirley Bradshaw, she had lost her, her husband. We need to remember her and her family. Um, Jerry's got a cousin in Gastonia, Crystal Ball, who's having some problems. We need to remember her. Let's also... Um, Lift up James Reed, the mayor in Andrews. I went to school with James. We've always been real good buddies. Um, he's got a lot on him right now. He's got people who's criticizing him. He's got people who, who's praising him. Um, just lift him up. He's got a lot on him right now. Um, I've got. A, I do have a praise report. Our pastor friend from Georgia, Pastor Robert Burt, is off of the ventilator. He is doing good. Um, Need to remember his wife, Joy. Yeah, his wife has come back tested as positive now, so let's remember Joy now. Um, <clears throat> so now I'm going to let Jerry come around and start us off with prayer. Good morning, church. We are thrilled to be back with you going into your homes. We wish that we were at the church this morning and we had high hopes to be there but uh, things just didn't work out but God is in control and uh, we are so thankful that we're able to come to you by internet uh, here on Facebook live and later today on YouTube and we just hope that uh, this finds everyone in uh, good condition and we hope and pray that if you're tuned in today you'll receive a blessing we're going to continue our three-part series on the uh, the trial the death and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and uh, first of all we want to go to the Lord in prayer Father, Lord, as we come to you this morning, Lord, we're so thankful, Lord, that we're able to uh, gather by means of the internet, Lord. Father, we pray that you would bless those who are watching live and pray, Lord, that you would bless those who will watch later. Father, we just pray, Lord, for uh, uh, your guidance. Uh, during this service, Lord, we pray, Lord, that each and every word that's said will be to uplift thy holy precious name. Father, you know our heart. Lord, you know, God, that uh, we're not doing this for show, Lord, but we're doing this to uplift thy holy precious name. And Father, we want you to have all the honor and the glory and the praise, Lord, for this uh, broadcast today Lord as we're streaming live on Facebook and Father we pray Lord that you would bless and have your way 
Father, we pray for Brother Jackie, Lord, that you continue to bless him. Father, I talked to his mother this uh, yesterday, late yesterday evening, Lord, and she uh, tells us that Jackie's doing real good. Father, we pray for Vernell Whitaker. Lord, that you continue to bless her, Lord. Lord, I pray a special prayer, Lord, for Sister Joan Whitaker, Lord. Uh, she's having a very hard time. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you would bless her. Father, bless Brother Philip, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that he is doing so much better. Brother Philip Crawford. And Father, we pray for our church members, Lord, Daniel and Ray and Ola and uh, Daniel's wife, Robbie, Sister Barbara Jean and Philip and Rosa, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that you would bless all of them. Lord, that they would receive a special blessing from you today, Lord. Father, continue to be with Kathy Mayberry, Lord. Father, I talked to her several times this week, Lord, as she's in the nursing home. <coughs> Lord, she has a long way to go. But Father, we just pray, Lord, that you would uh, bless her. Lord, we pray for the family of Chuck McTigert, Lord, who lost Chuck this week, Lord. We pray a special prayer for uh, his family, Lord. Lord, bless our leaders, whether it be our president, Lord, our national leaders, our governor, our uh, town mayor, James Reed. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you'd bless him. Like Tammy said, Lord, he's got a lot on him. And Lord, we just pray that you'd bless him, Lord. Bless our county government, our leaders, Lord, as they are trying to make the right decisions. And Lord, bless all who are on the uh, front lines, Lord, the firemen, the police, the EMS workers, the rescue workers. Father, bless all of them, Lord, as they risk their lives, Lord, to uh, keep us safe from harm. Lord, I pray for each and every one that's infected. Father, bless uh, Sister Joy uh, Burt, Lord, that you would uh, uh, heal her, God. Lord, uh, uh, be with uh, Sister Shirley Bradshaw, Lord. This is going to be the hard time for her, Lord. The funeral's over with, and I guess the children have already gone back home. And she's going to be facing some hard times, Lord, but I just pray, Lord, that you'd comfort her. Lord, give her the encouragement, Lord, and the strength she needs, Lord, to make it through this time. Lord, I pray for my cousin, Crystal Ball, out in Gastonia, Lord. I don't know the circumstance, Lord, but you do, Lord. She requested prayer this week, Lord, and we pray, Lord, that you would touch her, Lord, whatever the need is, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would touch her body and her soul. And Father, we just give you the honor and the praise and the glory for it all. In Jesus' sweet name, amen. Amen. We're going to take up where we left off last week. We read through Mark 14 uh, and verse 52. We're going to take up with 53 this morning. And we're going to be talking about the condemnation by the high priest, Peter's denial of Jesus, and Jesus' trial before Pilate. <coughs> and we're going to be starting off in verse 53, Mark 14, verse 53. And they led Jesus away to the high priest, and with him were assembled all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes. And Peter followed him afar off, even into the palace of the high priest, and he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. And the chief priest and all the council sought for witness against Jesus to put him to death and found none. For many bear false witness against him, but their witness agreed not together. And there arose certain and bare false witness against him, saying, 
We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. But neither so did their witness agree together. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him, and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, and coming in the clouds of glory. Clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes and saith, what need we any further witnesses? Now, renting is tearing, tearing of one's clothes, which symbolizes grief or horror of blasphemy. Then the high priest rent his clothes and saith, What need we any further witnesses? Ye have heard the blasphemy. What think ye? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. And some began to spit on him, and to cover his face, and to buffet him, and to say unto him, Prophesy! And the servants did strike him with the palm of their hands. The penalty for blasphemy was death by stoning. Can you imagine? being hit by several stones until death. How would that feel? To spit in a person's face was the ultimate insult. Even today we see people uh, spitting upon one another and that is still today that is a great insult to be spit upon by someone. And as Peter was beneath in the palace, there cometh one of the maids and the high priest. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, And thou also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand what I thou sayest. And he went out into the porch, and the cock crew. And a maid saw him again, and began to say to them that stood by, This is one of them. And he denied it again. And a little after, they stood, they that stood by said again unto Peter, Surely thou art one of them, for thou art a Galilean, and thy speech agreeeth thereto. But he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not this man of whom you speak. And the second time the cock crew. And Peter called to mind the word that Jesus said unto him, Before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And when he thought thereon, he wept. The first time the cock crew apparently escaped, Peter's noticed. The tense of the word denied suggests that Peter repeatedly denied knowing Jesus. Peter's accent identified him as a Galilean. Peter's denials escalated. To curse means to call down God's curse on oneself. To swear refers to taking an oath in God's name. Peter's cursing and swearing backed his strongest denial. I know not this man and the rooster crowed the second time Jesus turned and looked at Peter then Peter remembered Jesus' prediction and his own vow of steadfastness this verse is often seen as a third Jewish trial in which the whole council legalized their verdict in the morning decisions reached at night were not binding 
being delivered is repeatedly emphasized in this chapter and throughout Mark. Pilate was a Roman official among the Jews. Chapter 15 and verse 1 says, And straightway in the morning the chief priests held a, a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Aren't thou the king of the Jews? And the chief priest accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. And Pilate asked him again, saying, Answerest thou nothing? Behold, how many things they witness against thee. But Jesus yet answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. Now that at feast he realized unto them one prisoner whomsoever they desired. And there was one named Barabbas which lay bound with them that had made insurrection with him who had a, a committed murder in the insurrection. And the multitude crying aloud began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them. But Pilate answered saying, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priest had delivered him for envy. But the chief priest moved to the people that he should rather release Barber, Barabbas unto them. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, What will ye then that I shall do unto him whom you call the king of the Jews. And they cried out again, Crucify him. And Pilate said unto them, Why, what evil has he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, Crucify him. Crucify him. You know, so many times in our world today, we crucify Christ through our actions, through the things that we do. If Jesus was here today, would we deny knowing him in fear of being ridiculed by others? Why is being a part of the in crowd so important to us? Why do we get along with the crowd in order to please him rather than doing what's right? If you are a truly if you are truly saved, you will never be ashamed of Jesus. Tell others about him. Spread his love. Shine his light throughout you so that they can learn the truth. So many times, people that are claimed to be Christians crucifies Christ through their actions. We need to be careful. As Christians, we need to be careful of our actions. We need to let the world see that Jesus lives within us and Jesus is real. How many times have you seen somebody in town and you started a conversation with them? During that conversation, how many times do we mention Jesus? Are we ashamed of Jesus? We must be because we hardly ever mention Jesus in our daily conversation with other people. Jesus gave his life so that we could be free. Yet, we're too ashamed to talk about him in public. Jesus ought to be top priority when we're talking to someone. 
when we wake up in the morning, the first thing we need to do is to thank Jesus for another day. For another day that He's allowed us to live. We need to thank Him for allowing us to take another breath. You know, we're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised the next minute. Jesus died for our sins. Yet, we're too ashamed of Him. Think about this for a minute. What if Jesus had said, Lord, I can't do this. I don't know these people I'm dying for. I don't want to do this. What if he'd have said that? I'm so thankful. That he went to the cross. He could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free. Just like the song says. But I'm so thankful that he chose to do the right thing. He chose to go to the cross and die an agonizing death so that you, 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 and I could all be free. And all it takes is to ask forgiveness, to repent of our sins, and ask Jesus to come into our heart. And so Pilate, willing to contend the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium, and they called together the whole band. And they clothed him with purple, and plaited a crown of thorns and put it about his head and began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him on the head with a reed and did spit upon him and bowing their knees worshipped him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. And they compelled one uh, 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 Simon, a Cyrenian, who passed by coming out of the country, the father of Ad Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. And they bring him to the place, Golgotha, which is being interpreted the place of a skull. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with mirth, but he receiveth it not. Wine mingled with mirth was a primitive narcotic, but he received it not. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, whatever man should take. And it was the third hour they crucified him. And the third hour is nine o'clock in the morning. Jews reckon time of the daylight from sunrise. And the superscription of his accusation was written over the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two thieves, one on his right hand and the other on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, 
and he was numbered with the transgressors. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, oh, thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself and come down from the cross. Likewise, also the chief priests mocking and said among himself with the scribes, He saved others. Himself he can't save. He cannot save. Let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him revealed him. That is a sad time. That was a sad time. You know, it's one thing to be beaten. And it's one thing to be led to the place, the place of Golgotha, where he was going to be crucified. The Roman soldiers laid the cross down on the ground. And they laid Jesus on top of it. And they used spike nails. I, in my mind, that's like a railroad spike. It's you tie down a, uh, a railroad uh, rail to a cross tie. In my mind, that's the type of nail that they must have used. Can you imagine having those nails drove through your hands, drove through your feet, and they raised him up between two thieves? Father, as I come to you this morning, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for this message. Father, I pray, Lord, that it's touching the soul of some lost soul out there. And Father, I just pray, Lord, that you would convict that soul, Lord. And Father, I just pray, Lord, that this message could be applied to each and every heart that's listening this morning, God. Father, if it be your Lord willing, Lord, we will carry this message on into next week, Lord, with the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we ask that you would bless each person that's uh, listened this morning, everyone that's tuned in this morning, Lord, I pray a special blessing upon them. And we give you the honor and praise and the glory for it all in Jesus' sweet name. Amen. Now, before we leave, if God has spoke to your heart this morning, please let us know. You can email me at jerry.luther jerry.d.luther at gmail.com Thank you, Tammy. Or you can leave us a message here on Facebook on the Valley Town Cemetery Chapel page to send us a message. Or you can give me a call at 828-347-0618 and let us know if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. That's that's what we're here for, to spread the word of Jesus Christ, especially during this Easter season, this Passover Sunday. And if you would like to make a offering or donation to the Valley Town Cemetery Chapel, 
you can do so by making a check out to the Valleytown Cemetery Chapel and mailing it to P.O. Box 994, I believe that's right, Andrews, North Carolina, 28901. And I'd like to make mention we're not going to have service tonight. 